Welcome to Introduction to Regression Analysis. The goals of this video are to define regression analysis and also to determine how to measure how well a model fits given data. We won't actually perform regression in this video. There'll be several other videos that will show specific types of regression. In statistics, regression analysis involves any techniques for modeling and analyzing trends between a dependent variable, often y, and an independent variable, often x. Regression analysis helps us make predictions outside of the given data. If the prediction is within the range of the given data, it's called interpolation. And if the prediction is outside the range of the given data, it is called extrapolation. So for example, if we have this red set of data plotted on the coordinate plane, if we wanted to make a prediction at let's say x equals 1.2, maybe somewhere in here, because this would be within the range of the given data, it would be interpolation. But if we wanted to make a prediction at let's say x equals 7, maybe here, since 7 is outside the range of the given data, it would be called extrapolation. Now this video will use linear regression to introduce the concept of regression and ways of measuring how well a given model fits the data. As mentioned before, there are several other videos that will focus on different types of regression models. And the regression model chosen really depends on how the given data behaves, as well as a certain number of assumptions that are made. And for this set of videos, we'll be using the TI-84 graphing calculator to perform the regression. We won't do it by hand. When analyzing data, the first step is usually to create a scatter plot or scattergram. And this is just a graph using the coordinate plane to display the values of the two variables as a collection of points, as we see here as blue squares. And when creating a scatter plot, it's important to remember to label the x and y axes to know what they represent. So here the x axis represents the percent using a contraception, and the y coordinate represents the total fertility rate of the given country. So in blue, we see the line that was determined to be the best fit line for the given data. And what that means is this line is supposed to represent the trend of the data, and therefore we could use the equation of this line to make predictions. What I mean by that, if we knew a given x value or a country's percent using contraception, we could make a prediction for y, which would tell us the total fertility rate of that region. And we could also make the opposite prediction. If we knew the total fertility rate of a given region, we could make a prediction on the percent of people using contraception. So in general, the idea is that you would sketch your data on the coordinate plane and then make a prediction about what type of function would best fit the data. So the more you know about the basic types of functions, the better you would be at determining what type of regression to perform. And there are also ways to determine how well a model fits data. So when we're talking about linear regression, there's something called the correlation coefficient, identified as a capital R or lowercase r, and it's called the linear coalition coefficient. And it measures the strength and direction of the linear relationship between the two variables. And this is sometimes called the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. As you can see here by this formula, it can be quite time consuming to calculate, especially if you have a long data set where x and y are the pairs of data and n is the number of pairs. To get a better idea of what this tells us about the, so to get a better idea of what this tells us about the model, let's take a look at a few examples. Here we see our regression line or line of best fit graphed over our scatter plot. This is an illustration of a strong positive correlation because the points are tightly clustered along a line with a positive slope. So R would be close to a value of positive one. Positive one would be a perfect linear fit with a positive slope. Here's an example of a strong negative correlation. And notice the points are tightly clustered along a line with a negative slope, which means that R would be close to the value of negative one. And if there is no correlation at all, we'd have an R value that's close to zero as we see pictured here. The second measure of how well a model fits the data is the coefficient of determination or R squared. R squared measures the proportion of variability 
in a data set that is accounted for by the statistical model. And there is a formula here to calculate R squared, but for linear regression, R squared is just going to be the square of R. And the closer R squared is to 1, the better the model. So in general, R squared is equal to 1 minus the sum of squares of the residuals divided by the total sum of squares. And the sum of the squares of the residuals, as we see here, is the sum of the squares of the y values minus the y values of the model. Geometrically, it would be the area of the squares we see pictured here. And the total sums of the squares is the sum of the squares of the y values minus the average y value. And we see those values pictured here in red, where this horizontal line here is y bar, or the average y value. Again, to get a better feel for these two measures, let's go and take a look at an animation. Here we have a blue scatter plot and our red regression line, or line of best fit. Right now, r is equal to 0.68, and r squared is approximately 47%. So it has a positive correlation, and roughly 47% of the variability of the data set can be explained by the linear relationship, or by the equation of the line. And watch what happens as we increase the value of r. The points will become more clustered around the red line, and as we do that, r increases, and so does r squared. Here we have a very strong positive correlation. r is equal to 0.99, and r squared is equal to 98.1%. Here we see a very weak linear correlation. As we decrease the value of r, notice that the slope turns negative, and as r approaches negative 1, the points cluster around the regression line with a negative slope. So here we see r equals negative 0.99, and r squared is equal to 98%. So even in these examples, we're looking at linear equations. If we look at different types of functions, the closer r squared is to 1, the better the model fits the data. So I think we'll stop here on this video. Again, in the next several videos, we'll take a look at determining a variety of regression models using the TI-84 graphing calculator and then answering a variety of questions based upon our model. I hope you found this intro helpful. Thank you for watching.